What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to do proper web scraping and web automation using Selenium on a server where we might have no screen as well as other limitations. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to learn how to do proper web scraping using Selenium in a server environment. And the difference between your desktop system and a server environment is that the server environment has certain limitations that your desktop system may not have. And this is even more the case if you use a containerized environment. So if you take Docker and you dockerize your applications before you deploy them, this introduces an even more special environment with more limitations and more things to consider. So the obvious limitation for most servers is that they don't have a monitor. And when you build a Selenium application by default, what happens is it opens up an instance of Chrome, for example, shows you the process, interacts with web pages, shows you exactly what's happening. And if you try to just take this application and run it on a server, it will most likely crash because the server will tell you that it didn't find a screen to, to display something on. So that will lead to problems because you don't consider the limitation that the server doesn't have a monitor. This is one example. So in this video today, what we're going to do is we're going to build a very simple Selenium uh, web automation application. So I'm just going to go to my own page and scrape a couple of headings. And then we're going to see how this does not work immediately in a Docker container and what we need to do for it to work in a Docker container. That is what we're going to do in this video today. Obviously, for this, we're going to need to install a couple of packages. Uh, first of all, of course, Selenium, then also beautiful soup four, which is for the scraping part. Uh, and then we're going to also need what is it called web driver? Let me just see what the package is called exactly web driver underscore manager, I think is the package. And we also go, uh, we're also going to need LXML for the beautiful soup parsing. But the main thing here is Selenium, which is the web automation part. Beautiful soup is just for the scraping. Web driver manager just downloads the, uh, the Chrome driver that we're going to use. And this is just for parsing the XML or the HTML. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to open up a Python file here. And we're going to start with the imports. First of all, we're going to import time so that we can delay certain parts of the application or of the automation. Then we're going to say from BS4, from beautiful soup for import beautiful soup. Then we're going to say from Selenium import web driver from Selenium dot Chrome dot service import service uh, web driver Chrome. Sorry. So Selenium web driver Chrome service import service. And then from Selenium, or actually from web driver manager dot Chrome import Chrome driver manager. So those are the imports. And what we're going to do first is we're going to create a driver. So we're going to say driver equals web driver dot Chrome with a capital C. And then we're going to say that the service that we're going to use here is going to be um, created on demand. So we're going to say here service instance inside of that, we're going to say Chrome driver manager, and then dot install. So it's going to install a Chrome driver if it doesn't find one. That's the idea of this. Um, so we don't have to specify a concrete path to a Chrome driver to, to some package, uh, or to a binary, we can just say install the Chrome driver like this It's just a convenient way to do this. Um, and now what we're going to do again, very simple, we're going to specify a URL, as I said, I'm going to use my own page here. So uh, neural nine.com, I'm going to go to my books page, and I'm going to just scrape the headings of the books. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say driver, get URL. And then we're going to say soup equals beautiful soup based on whatever the page source is. So I'm going to go to the URL, I'm going to get the page source, uh, I'm going to parse it with LXML, which is why we installed this. And now I'm going to say the headings that I'm looking for are going to be sue find all um, h2 tags with the following limitation, the class has to be Elementor heading title, and you can see my pages based on WordPress for heading in headings, print heading, get text. So just so we see that this works in general, then we're going to sleep for 10 seconds, just so we can look at this a little bit. And then we're going to quit. 
So again, this is a very simple um, use case here, nothing too fancy. I just want to show you uh, that this works here on my desktop system now. So I can run this. I don't do anything now. It's going to open up a Chrome instance. You can see it opens up a window. It needs a monitor to do that. It goes to my page uh, and it already scrapes here all the relevant um, information that I specified here. This stays open and at some point it closes. So this is a simple web automation script here. I cannot take this now and just deploy it on a server. I cannot just dockerize this and expect it to work as it is. And I'm going to show you that this is the case. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to create a Docker file, which is going to uh, be the basis for dockerizing this. And of course, you need to have Docker installed, you need to have uh, Docker working on your system, you don't need to understand everything about Docker, but you should be uh, able to run this on your system. I'm not going to cover this part. here. So we're going to say here from Python version 3.10. This is the one that I'm using. We're going to say working directory, let's call it slash app. We're going to copy everything from this directory to slash app. We're going to run the following command for this, we need to have a requirements txt file here, we're going to just um, put selenium with version 491 beautiful soup four with version oh we need two equal signs uh version 4.12.2 then we need web driver manager version 400 and then lxml whatever version shouldn't be too uh too important those are the requirements and what we're going to do now here in the docker file is we're going to say pip install you can also specify here if we want trusted host pypy dot python org minus r requirements txt which should be part of the app directory since we copied everything. And then we're going to run some Linux commands here. So apt get update. And then we're going to say apt get install dash y w get unzip. Those are just two tools that we're going to need. Then we're going to uh, use them right away. So we're going to say w get HTTPS colon slash slash uh, download so dl dot google dot com slash Linux slash direct slash Google Chrome stable current AMD 64 dot dep. And I'm going to continue down here, uh, apt install dash why this thing that we just downloaded Google Chrome stable current AMD 64 dot dep. And then we're going to say remove this thing again. So remove this Google Chrome uh, stable current AMD 64 dep. And then finally apt get clean. So what this does is basically it updates the system packages, it installs two tools that we need here for unzipping, and for getting something from a URL, we get this from the official Google website, we get the Chrome driver, we install it, we remove this and we clean uh, with app get nothing too fancy. And the command we need here for the container is uh, Python main.py. This is what the file is named. So that is what we need to create a Docker container. And what we need to do now to turn this into an actual Docker container is we need to open up the command line and we need to navigate to our working directory. So in my case, it's the current directory here. Uh, and in my case, it's located at documents programming, neural nine, Python, and then current. And here now we're going to run a Docker command. Now you need to have Docker installed on your system, you need to have it running. So the daemon needs to be running in the background. If you have Docker uh, desktop, you just need to have Docker desktop running. So Docker needs to be active for you to use it. Um, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to just say Docker built dash T and then a name for the container, for example, uh, scraping dash selenium or something like this. Uh, and of course, I need to provide dot as the current directory. So what it does here is you can see, 
it builds the container. And the idea of using a Docker container is that you have a containerized environment. You don't depend on any system packages, system resources, because this Docker container is its own thing. It's its own full uh, environment with all the packages, all the tools, all the Python libraries, everything it needs. It doesn't rely on my Linux system here. It doesn't rely on your Windows system. You can just run this um, on a server that has Docker and it has its own uh, environment, which makes it predictable to some degree. It makes it um, always use the same packages, use the same operating system. It doesn't depend on any differences between operating systems. And that's the idea. The problem is, as I said, our application will not run in this Docker container right away, because this Docker container, of course, you can con configure it to have a display and you can configure it to have uh, a different way of working. But you know, you want to take this Docker container and deploy it on a web server without a screen, you, you're not going to have a screen. So this is our Docker container, it's now uh, built, it's now there. And what we can do now is we can say Docker run uh, and then what did we say? Scraping dash selenium. This is going to run the application this is going to run the full container with the command Python main py. And you can see we get an exception here. The exception is uh, the process started from Chrome location is no longer running. So Chrome drivers assuming Chrome has crashed, uh, we get this problem here. Now the problem doesn't tell us necessarily what to do here exactly, but we can do a bunch of things that will get rid of this problem. So let's close the terminal here and let's go into our code to add something called options. So what we can do here is we can say from Selenium, web driver, Chrome, options, import options. And now before actually using uh, the Chrome driver, before actually creating the Chrome driver, we're going to define options, we're going to say Chrome options is equal to options. And we're going to add a bunch of options that have a different functionality. So the first one we're going to add here is the argument dash dash no dash sandbox. Now this can be a um, security concern, you don't want to do this unless it's necessary. And you don't want to do this unless you know what's uh, what, what you're doing here. But essentially, no sandbox disables the sandbox um, of Chrome. And it can be necessary to do that for containerized environments, you can try without it. But sometimes it doesn't work. And you need to do no sandbox to be able to run this on a server. Oftentimes, there is no way around this. The second thing that we want to add here is the dash dash headless option and headless basically just means it's going to run without a screen, it's not going to open up a graphical user interface, it will just do what it does, and it won't need an actual window being displayed. This is useful for automated testing. And of course, you need it if you don't have a screen. And then finally, we're going to say Chrome options at argument dash dash and then disable dash def dash shm dash usage. The idea of this is that uh, by default, Selenium uses or Chrome uses um, this slash def slash shm shared memory um, for the memory. And the problem is that in server environments in containerized environments, this might be a too small memory. So what it's going to do instead, if you use this option is it's going to use a temp directory, it's going to write to disk instead of using the shared memory, which is of course going to be slower, but it's some time again, uh, again, uh, necessary. So those are the three options using those three options. And of course, specifying them here in the Chrome driver by saying options equals Chrome options uh, is what's going to make this compatible with our Docker container. So we're going to go back now into the terminal. We're going to navigate again to our working directory. And here we're going to run again, Docker run, or actually, first of all, we need to rebuild this, because the source code has changed. So Docker build dash T uh, scraping dash selenium dot. And then it's going to build that container again. And afterwards, we can run it again. All right, so it's now finished, we can go ahead and say Docker run scraping dash selenium. And we can see now if it works or not. So it takes some time. And then we should hopefully see no error message, but we should see the headings being displayed. There you go, took some time, but 
we get the actual output. So the scraping process worked with headless with uh, what was it disable shared memory and with no sandbox, because now it is compatible with the Docker environment, we can still run this by the way, locally, so I can still run this here. Uh, but we we're not going to see any window pop up, it's going to do everything using the Chrome driver without using the graphical user interface. And you can see that um, it's going to happen all without us seeing anything, but it's going to give us the result in the end. And probably it took so long because we sleep here. So that could be the reason it took so long for the Docker container. Um, but yeah, you can see here, we get the output. And this is the headless option. This is the reason why we don't see it. And it worked in a Docker container. And when we deploy this on a server, it's also going to work on that server. If it doesn't have a screen, if it doesn't have, uh, if it has all these limitations, it's still going to work. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.